Richard Turner is one of the top card mechanics in the world, a playing card manipulator like no other. He's performed in over 200 countries, has been seen by billions of people on TV, and even fooled Penn and Teller. Yet it hasn't always been easy for this two-time Magician of the Year winner and Magic Castle Hall of Fame inductee who started to lose his sight at a young age. While some may see this as a disadvantage, Richard learned to accept his disability and in turn, inspire people across the world in overcoming adversity. Thanks to a dogged determination to succeed and a healthy love of life, Richard serves as a powerful example of how to win with the hand you are dealt. Growing up, they called me a perpetual motion machine because I always had to be moving and cards were a way for me to take all that hyper nervous energy and focus it into uh, a particular area. And I went to college and the dean of the college was approached by a man named Steve Terrell, who was a TV and movie star back in the 50s and early 60s. And he was forming a the theatrical company. I auditioned, I managed to get in. As I would be in rehearsals with Steve Terrell as we were loading the, new, the script for the new play that we were working on. Mm -hmm. Before, what am I doing? Practicing with the cards. As soon as I got back off, back to practicing. And finally goes one day, he says, you love cards. If you become the best card man in the world, you will earn the respect of others, and that will open doors for you. He was the impetus on that direction and the encouragement uh, to have uh, gone that direction. When I first met Richard, obviously he had a little bit of sight. And so when he had his first turn and loss of vision, it was a big struggle at that point because Richard kind of wasn't willing to admit that he couldn't see and that he needed a little more help. And he was really kind of clinging to hold on to that independence that he had. When you're a black belt, when you're trained, you know, to be tough and you uh, climb cliffs, swung on the trapeze, hunted sharks, wrestled a seven foot blue, and all these, you know, things that are, you know, kind of off the charts. And then to all of a sudden realize that I need the help of someone just to walk down the street. As Kim would say, she just flat out said, get over yourself. People want to help you. It's okay to let them know that you can't see. It was okay to allow other people to know that and to help him and that it was not going to um, ruin his reputation or the character that he had, the public character that he had built up. I realized I didn't have to be Mr. Macho Man or whatever you want to call it. And also I realized that people are, are encouraged and inspired when I talk to them. His ability to correspond with people all over the world and to just lend through his emails, he gives so much encouragement. I know so many people that he'll correspond with for years who are struggling with something personal and he'll just stick with them through all of that. I think that's a side that a lot of people don't see about Richard. If that's uh, my purpose to help other people out, I, you know, got to get over my own pride and um, accept, accept that and let it, uh, you know, hopefully motivate and inspire and encourage others to, to be their best and to not let whatever it is take them down. Because here's the bottom line. Every single person on this planet has some kind of a disability. It could be laziness. It could be, um, well, like I say, procrastination, I think is one of the worst. It, it, it could just be doubt, you know, having just doubt in yourself. If I have something to say, show or demonstrate, that will encourage them to be the best that they can be, then I say, Richard Turner, get over yourself and let it happen.